Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a wonderful day today. It's Akizial here, and today I'll be talking about the C-14 Impaler Gauss Rifle from StarCraft. I had quite a bit of time to look into this, because, uh, well, I may have been stuck in a research lab on uh, in the Tirador system for the last week or so. But, that aside, let's start with the cannon for those who may not be familiar with this first little piece of kit. It's a standard weapon of the Terran Marine. It's, it's a fully automatic, Gauss-assisted rifle firing 8mm spikes at up to 30 rounds per second. And that's right, it's Gauss-assisted. Those spikes are, are accelerated using a combination of propellant and magnetic induction, though the latter is likely responsible for most of the acceleration. They pull from a standard 500 round magazine, but mercenaries such as the War Pigs have been seen using larger drum magazines. It's fairly customizable and can receive a retractable bayonet, laser sights, or an underbell grenade launcher. The grenade launcher is forbidden under Dominion Marine Corps regulations, so the rank and file of the Terran Dominion won't be seen with it. It also features a torch function and a scope with IFF functions. There was a streamlined variant used in the Great War that doesn't require the wearer to be suited up in CMC armor. Someone in the armor can even use it one-handed at the cost of lower accuracy. But what about those 8mm spike slide fires? Standard spikes are made of depleted uranium, but there are others. Steel-tipped spikes maim instead of kill. As hard as that may be to believe, considering the velocity those spikes travel at. There are also hollow point, incendiary, and armor piercing spikes. It has a maximum burst size due to its capacitor. This means that each shot depletes some of the charge from the capacitor until it's completely drained, at which point it must be recharged from the rifle's internal power supply or an external one. This preven prevents excessive expenditure of ammunition, which is something that the Terrans initially had problems with. Marines are putting far more rounds into their targets and were needed to put, put them down. Then again, there's, there's no kill quite like overkill, is there? The C-14 can receive additional power from a suit of CMC armor, so it won't be solely reliant on its own power supply. If getting ammunition to soldiers on the front line is difficult in war, imagine also needing to get a power source to them so they can recharge their Gauss rifles. Anyway, if CMC armor is the power armor worn by Terran infantry, and there are a variety of models. I believe the variant worn currently by Marines is the CMC 400A. Maybe I'll talk about the armor in detail if this is enough interest. But, according to Canon, the depleted uranium spice can penetrate 2 inches, that's 5.08 centimeters of steel. But, for a depleted uranium um, projectile, traveling at hypersonic speeds, that always seemed a bit suspect to me. So, using a calculator, which I will link in the description, which calculates the penetration values for tank shells, I modeled the armor penetration capabilities of the C-14 spikes after AP FSDS rounds. Why? Despite the C-14 ammunition shown in the Wings of Liberty cinematics, they have always been described as spikes and not bullets. This fixes the issue of the barrels being much wider in the cinematics than they should be for an 8mm spike. I input what cannon information there is on the C14 round. The total length of the depleted uranium spike is 100mm, and the diameter is 8mm. The density of depleted uranium is 19,050 kilograms per meter cube, and given that it travels at a hypersonic speed, the minimum velocity we Mach 5, which is 1.715 kilometers per second, or 0.728 miles per second. 
at maximum will be Mach 10, which is 3.43 kilometers per second, or 2.13 miles per second. We don't know the frustrum length or diameter upper base, so I use the proportions of the M829. Thus, I assume the length to be 16.8 millimeters, and the diameter upper base to be 1 millimeter due to be it being a spike and, assumedly, terminating in a pointed tip. For the target, I use the average density of steel because I could not find a good source for the density of rolled homogeneous armor steel, which has a Brunel hardness number of 302 to 400. So, with all these, these bits of info into the calculator, I found that the minimum penetration values is, would be 123.6 millimeters or 4.85, sorry, 4.87 inches at point blank range, and the maximum penetration at point blank would be 160.4 millimeters, which is 6.31 inches. But wait. There's more. Not only would the standard infantry weapon of the Terran Marine have a much greater penetrating power than the two inches of steel listed in canon, but there's another facet which I rarely see brought up in discussion. Now, according to a paper published by researchers in Acta Arma Armamentari, an official journal run by the China Ordnance Society, Extensive organ damage would be caused by shockwaves that form in front of projectiles traveling at hypersonic speeds. They were said to have tested this by shooting pigs in the thigh with hypersonic rounds, and noted that that, that it left crater-like wounds and even caused brain damage. Now, a hard enough target, such as a vehicle, would cause the depleted uranium to shear and send small, sharp fragments inside it. It just as what happens with modern tank shells. So while it would pierce a neat little hole for a soft target, being armored would make it worse. And by armored, I mean heavily armored, because the Gauss rifles cut through the Terran Marine armor with with ease. Instead. In the case of a more armored target like, say, a Marauder, which for those not familiar with Starcraft, imagine someone with, with RPGs strapped to their arms and wearing armor that makes them essentially a walking tank. But yeah, for, for them, instead, there'll be organ damage from the shockwaves and shards of burning shrapnel tearing through their internals. That is, if the spike doesn't melt or fragment either mid-flight or on contact, like a steel ball that was said to have been accelerated to 4,000 meters per second, or Mach 11.6. Then again, steel has a melting point ranging from 1,205 to 1,370 degrees Celsius, that's 2,200 to 2,000 times at Fahrenheit, compared to the 1,132 Celsius, or 2,069.6 Fahrenheit, of depleted uranium. And the steel ball was accelerated to, the, to a higher speed than the spike is said to be. Of course, I could be way off. I'm no physicist, and I've made quite a few assumptions. Some people have calculated the C-14 as being comparable to the M-242 Bushmaster, or which is a 25mm autocannon, or to the GAU-8 Avenger 30mm Gatling autocannon in terms of stopping power. The GAU-8 it is well known for being in that Gatling gun on the A-10 Warthog. Anyway, thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below, and until next time, ta-ta!